What's up, brosive? So today we're talking about clickbait in the fitness industry and the 12 types of clickbait that you probably click on on a regular basis because you are a human being. Okay, so the first kind is gonna be fear-mongering. I see this all the time. Any kind of killing your gains video is gonna be in this category. What is really killing your gains is clicking on killing your gains videos because if you click on a killing your gains video, it's gonna kill your gains because the stuff you do to get gains are gonna be killed because you don't do them because you watch a killing your gains video, which is killing your gains, basically. And actually there's very little that you can do in the gym that actually kills your gains. Unless it's like not being consistent or not progressively overloading or just not eating any calories at all or just having super low protein, nothing is really gonna kill your gains, okay? It has to be the basics that it's gonna be killing your gains and it's not gonna be some specific exercise that you're doing. I gotta burp. Oh, curry. Fucking curries get me every time, bro. My point is that as long as you stick to the basics in terms of exercises and also in terms of concepts, so in terms of like progressive overload, etc., you should be fine, okay? So don't click on killing your gains videos because they are mostly just a waste of time and they're just designed to get you to click. Other types of fear mongering might be like, this vegetable causes cancer. 12 cancer causing foods you should never put in your mouth again. Wanna hear a troubling statistic? Did you know that each week over 3,000 Canadians are diagnosed with some form of cancer? It's not easy news to get. It affects everyone around you, and some of the hardest times for the patient can lie ahead. You might see an advertisement like, the three foods that you must avoid if you don't want erectile dysfunction, or this doctor discovered how to eat meat without getting cancer. Okay, it's it's mostly bullshit. Uh, Thomas DeLauer does these quite a bit where he, you know, has one study and he misinterprets the shit out of this one study and he applies it to everyone and just clickbaits everyone by saying bananas are gonna kill you. Also beware of the term linked. It It's thrown around a lot, especially on the news. It doesn't actually mean all that much. For example, you could say, uh, cooked mushrooms are linked to erectile dysfunction. Well, cooked mushrooms are sort of weak, limpid, and floppy, and so is the other situation. There is a link. However, that doesn't mean one is causing the other. The sun is linked to cancer. That doesn't mean you don't go outside. So, you know, just because you hear the word linked doesn't mean you have to actually change your behavior. Deadlifts could be linked to back pain, but if you do them properly, they're actually gonna be preventative, not actually causing any kind of harmful situation. Same for squats, same for bench press and shoulders. There are links everywhere, but that doesn't mean you have, have to actually change your behavior based on these links. Another one is the endless amount of prehab that people think you have to do in the gym. I mean, if someone is a beginner and they search anything on YouTube, they're probably gonna come across an Athlean X video first. And if they watch his videos, you know, let's say they spend a day just binging on this guy's videos, first, they're gonna think this is the only source when it comes to fitness information, which is definitely not the case. And second, they're gonna think that fitness is super complicated and they need to do a bunch of prehab, otherwise their body is gonna implode in a dysfunctional mess. And for most people, that's just not the case at all, okay? So there's no need to be extremely fearful about anything you do in the gym. Yes, it is possible to get injured, but actually risk of injury is pretty low for exercise in general. And you know, compared to a lot of other sports, bodybuilding type of weight training is actually extremely safe. Number two is gonna be money. Now this is something that I see all the time and I find to be honestly mildly repulsive and I don't actually get jealous of this whatsoever. I just find it to be kind of disgusting where you have like this fitness influencer and they're like, here's my new house, here's my new car, here's my new gym that I'm putting together and look at all this super expensive equipment. And this often has a money in the title or the thumbnail to be like money symbol, zero, 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 a bunch of zeros hopefully another digit besides zero in the title there somewhere. Uh, but for me personally, this is almost always just pure entertainment. And you know, I think a lot of people are addicted to this kind of content. They just watch it and they're like, oh my God, look at this guy. He's such a, he's such a fucking hero. He's, he's spending all this money. Wow, great. 
there's really no educational value there and I would encourage you to not click on that kind of bullshit. It's very popular, but it's kind of sad. It's a sad statement about humanity that that type of content is extremely successful. Giveaways are going to be another big one where it's like, oh, there's a, a $5,000 giveaway. You know, sometimes it's cash. Sometimes it's just pure bullshit. No one wins. They're like, comment below for your chance to win part of a $10,000 prize. No one wins. Okay, you see in the comment a few weeks later, everyone's like, did someone, did someone win? Did, was there a winner? An account person pays another account to say, like, oh, yeah, it was me. I won. Eh. Sure. Okay. The one exception in my point of view is gambling. Now, maybe it's because I've been in Asia for a while. What's going on here? Asians love gambling. Well, uh, I've been converted to east side, beast side, bitches. But, um, yeah, I love a good wager. I love a good bet. You know, you think I'm natural? I know you're not natural. Come watch me pee in the cup. Whoa. Drama at its finest, I love that shit, and I think we all can agree that is some tasty clickbait. Number three, speaking of peeing in a cup, the call out. Now basically every natty or not video ever falls into this category. Uh, I've actually done this in the past before, some style of content where I smelled some bullshit and I said, hey everyone, there's some bullshit over here. And uh, some of my videos that have the lowest like to dislike ratio, have been these kind of call out videos where I called out Ryan Humiston for talking shit about compound exercises and progressive overload, come on, uh, where I called out FitTuber for trying to sell people bamboo, which was rotten. And, you know, those videos got a ton of pushback. And, you know, I don't do this to be popular. I do this because I see some bullshit and I think it deserves to be called out because if no one calls it out, well, people believe it. You know, it's, it's amazing how many people believe this kind of blatant bullshit where it just, it's so obvious how much of a scam or how full of shit these people are, and yet they're believed because they're, you know, they're popular or they are convincing or they're charismatic or they have abs or whatever, but some people just can't smell bullshit. They just, they lack the uh, ofulcatory, I think that's the word, device to actually smell BS. Now, you can actually turn these into an educational type of moment. I think Greg Doucette sometimes does those. Other times, it's just pure drama. It's like, they said this, then he said that, and then she said this, and then, oh my god, he's calling out the girlfriend, and then people ask me my opinion on these all the time. I don't even watch it. They're like, they, they send me this video like, oh, he said this about him. I just, I, I just don't care, okay? Stop sending me these videos unless there's like something I can learn from it or something that I could actually legit comment about in terms of like actually helping people rather than just stirring up drama, stop sending me that kind of stuff, okay? Number four is gonna be the promise or the guarantee. Now I see this all the time, go from zero to five pull-ups in two weeks, guaranteed. Really? Okay, so if you're telling me someone is 400 pounds and they've never strength trained in their life, they can go from zero to five pull-ups in two weeks, because that's what guaranteed means, okay? You're making a statement based on a wide range of people and you are still guaranteeing something. Even if I have a client and I have all of their information from a 40 question questionnaire, there are no guarantees, okay? Because I don't know exactly how the process will go because I don't have a fucking orb that can tell me the future, okay? I'm not a fortune teller and I don't know what the future holds, so there are no guarantees ever. So if anyone in fitness ever guarantees you anything, they are almost always full of shit. Another red flag is if you hear the words fix, tweak, twerk, tip, trick, hint, hack, all these other ones. Uh, there's nothing for free in fitness, okay? There's no get around, there's no shortcut, there's no pill, okay, steroids, whatever. But uh, unless you're willing to do that, there's nothing you get for free, okay? There's always a cost, even with steroids. And so, you know, don't think you're gonna watch a video and just go out the next day and miraculously, marvelously, majestically have a new and wonderful physique if you're skipping the basics, okay? Put in the work. Not by clicking on videos, but by learning the basics, sticking with the basics over a long period of time, and that is what is gonna give you the results. The four hour body, six minute abs,
Number five is going to be name dropping. Now, the simple fact of the matter is that having someone's name in the title or picture in the thumbnail is just going to get more views. It doesn't matter what it's about. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Videos about people just tend to get more views. We are tribal by nature. We still are, even with the age of the internet. And, you know, I think that appeals to a vestigial something or other in our brain. So, you know, I don't make this kind of content because it's going to get more views. But it absolutely does get more views. And some people have taken this to extremes. You know, someone like Greg Doucette, probably two-thirds of his videos have someone else in the title, whether it's a natty or not, or someone reviewing his product or whatever. But he's clearly found that that type of content just gets more views. It gets more clicks. And I don't see a way around that. It's just human nature. And um, if I'm reviewing someone, if it's positive or negative, it just gets more views than a normal titled video. Number six is gonna be the curiosity gap. And this is gonna be the gap between what you see and what you know. This is used all the time. I don't think it's always bad, but it is extremely prolific. So I pulled up a search result from a popular YouTuber. How to get bigger shoulders fast, just do this. So just do this, it doesn't tell you what it is, and you have to click to find out what it is. Also, this is overpromising because no one gets big shoulders fast. Uh, I guess you get them bigger by just getting a pump, but in terms of actual muscle growth, nothing happens quickly, okay? Another one, how to get bigger quads fast. Again, fast. It's promising. It appeals to the dopamine release. We want things now. God damn it, okay? We don't want to wait a year or five years, the time that it actually takes to develop a good physique. The next one Eight worst ab exercises ever, stop doing these. So again, this is fear-mongering. Oh my God, maybe I'm doing one of these exercises that is the worst ones. Stop doing these, but it doesn't actually tell you in the title. Best rep range to build muscle faster. Well, if you've looked at the research, you'll know that you can gain muscle at a variety of rep ranges. You can gain muscle with 30, with 10, with three. Some are gonna be a little bit more optimal but there's not one muscle building rep range. And most of the talk about rep ranges is overdone, okay? Choose the rep range that makes sense given the exercise, not on a just global, oh, eight to 12, six to eight, okay? It depends on the exercise, it depends on the individual, and depends on what you enjoy doing. But that level of nuance just, it is not popular, okay? Nuance and talking about different sides, pros and cons, you know, give and take, that just does not make its way into truly popular videos. Number seven is going to be response and reaction videos. So responding to another person or reacting to a situation. Uh, maybe you watch a certain music video online. Wet ass pussy made that pullout game weak. Woo! Or you, you know, you watch some kind of crude compilation or reacting to comments about yourself. Uh, this is all extremely clickbaity, clickworthy, depending on how you want to define it, but reacting to things and reacting to people do really well. Um, I think, you know, there's a whole genre of people who watch other people play games. They don't even play the games themselves, they're just watching other people play games. To me, that is absolutely mind-boggling, okay? Gaming is one thing, I understand that, I, I, I am a gamer myself, but watching someone else play a game for hours on end, to me, I just don't get that. But it gets clicks. Number seven is gonna be Atom. You don't know what Atom is? This is gonna be abs, tatas, assets, leanness, and muscles, okay? So sex sells, and sex also gets clicks. So if I have someone with abs in the thumbnail, it's just gonna get more clicks. Same with other things along that nature, okay? And people know this, and this is part of the reason why people do videos on other people, um, just because they get to put them in the thumbnail and it gets a lot of clicks. And most male YouTubers are gonna spend a lot of time shirtless, and a lot of female YouTubers as well, in various stages of <laughs> nakedness. And the reality is, again, we have these instincts and sex tends to sell, that you know appeals to our baser instincts. I tend to not do that, and when people tell me like, oh, you only have 10,000 subs despite all the videos you've made, I know I could do some things to get way, way more if I really want to go down that road. Number nine is gonna be the apology kind of video. Now, this is not exclusive to fitness by any means, but uh, who doesn't love a good grovel, right? Ooh. Crocodile tears, you gotta love it. 
you have to realize most YouTube videos are bullshit. Okay, especially if they have a lot of fans, a lot of followers, the likelihood of being, them being full of shit goes increasingly higher. Okay, so if you see someone with a thumbnail and it looks like they're crying, they're not fucking crying. Okay, the odds of them actually being emotional over this are very close to a zero. Okay, and I've noticed actually some YouTubers, speaking of uh, that, they attack someone out of nowhere for no real reason, and then the person responds... And then they say, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I got this wrong, I'm only right a certain percentage of the time. Well, they know that they get views for the first attack, and then they get views on the other side, and then usually the people they're attacking, they only care about views and followers and money and subs and whatever, so they're actually happy to get attacked, okay? Because they know they're actually going to benefit from this in terms of money, basically, okay? So you have to realize a lot of this drama is pure fabrication and nothing more and you're in the middle and if you believe this kind of stuff you're going to be very very easy to manipulate and sorry to burst everyone's bubble but thor and eddie kind of falls into this category okay mostly hype mostly drama yeah maybe there's some bad blood but they are just fueling the fire to get people amped up to get views attention and money there's a reason they put the fight fucking like two years away okay just to build up and amp up and get attention number 10 is going to be challenges now this could be a calorie consumption challenge this could be i ate my son's diet for a day challenge once and again and again matt does fitness does a ton of these these are all of his most popular videos and i get it they're very entertaining uh they're very watchable i actually really like his uh style of shooting it's clear that a ton of effort goes into actually making the videos especially the intros and i do like his content i don't think he's natural but anyway that's a <laughs> that's a discussion for another day or probably never now this type of content it's not educational okay don't fool yourself into thinking it's educational it's pure entertainment and always will be but that doesn't mean it's necessarily bad if someone like matt does fitness gets you into lifting and gets you, you know, pumped up about lifting weights and gets you into the gym, for me, that's a net positive. As long as, ideally, you branch out into uh, other sources uh, when it comes to actually educational information. Now, I heard someone say, like, Matt is taking advantage of his son. Come on. That's half the reason to have a kid if you're a fitness influencer, okay? When my wife and I have a baby, that baby is going to be working for its food. Okay, no free meals in this house. Number 11 is going to be transformations. Now, keep in mind that a ton of transformation pictures on the internet are just bullshit. Okay, like they're just photoshopped. I mean, they can do deep fakes now. They can do tons of weird shit. And to photoshop a picture, I really don't think takes all that much. I've never done it ever. But it's also not that hard to do from all accounts. And a lot of this is like three best rear delt exercises. And then the before picture is like where it's photoshopped to just have zero <laughs> rear delt. Like they just fucking cut out everything off of the back of the arm. Uh, and then after, they just like put a fucking stake on the back of their arms. Yeah, do these three rear delt exercises. You're gonna, you're gonna blow up and just get some stake implants on the back of your arms. All right. Number 12 is going to be fails and cringe compilations. Um, and I actually did one of these in the past. It was like ego lifter in my gym. And normally if I get hateful comments or mean comments, I've even gotten death threats before. To me, it just doesn't affect me at all. Um, but on this one video, you know, the comments were kind of getting to me. It's like, oh, you, uh, I had sort of filmed someone in the gym who was like ego lifting and he was curling 30 kilos or something. And the comments were kind of getting to me. And I realized it was because I wasn't really comfortable with the video that I had made. I didn't really have, you know, passion and faith in what I was doing. And I wasn't 100% behind what I was doing because I wouldn't want someone to do that to me, to film me in the gym and put that footage online. And so, you know, I realized the comments were getting to me because deep down I felt shitty about it, you know? And so I actually took the video down. So thank all, thank you all of you for calling me on that like it was wrong of me to actually now it's an apology video shit um but it, it was wrong of me to put that up there and you know i took it down because it was a shitty thing to do this is also a type of clickbait you know fails cringe compilations whatever um you know i think this can actually be educational in a way 
uh, and this was my intention putting this out there, was, you know, if you see someone fail in the gym or, or you know, they're doing something stupid in the gym or they're lifting too heavy or they're using machine in the wrong way and something bad happens, this can be actually a good way to avoid injury. Monkey see, monkey do. Or in this case, monkey see, monkey don't do. Still, I think past a certain point, this is going to be more entertainment than education. Sure, spend a few hours once watching gym fails, but don't let it dissuade you from ever lifting. You know, I think it's easy to watch a fail video oh, he tore his biceps when doing a deadlift or a row, and now you're never going to do any of those exercises again, or, oh, they tore a pec when they were bench pressing. You know, if you watch enough fail videos, you'll never lift again, okay? Because you think that, oh, if I touch anything in the gym, I'm just going to, like, rip my entire body to shreds. When the flash hit you, you could see the x-rays of your hands through your closed eyes. That's not really the case. Usually these are very isolated incidents and they're not really worth worrying about too much. And cringe videos are like when uh, someone goes up to girls in the mall and like hits on them or, or hitting on girls in the gym, that kind of stuff. We love a good cringe. We love a good, you know, don't we, don't we love a good cringe? Um, honestly, most of this is a setup. Like they find an accomplice and they're just, oh, they're walking by and the NPC. No, they're both PCs. They're both in on the action. So don't think like, oh, this guy just fucking walked up with his muscles. And then like he got the girl so easily. He got the number. Oh, they're going back to his place. No. Okay. That's not really how real life works. And if you try that in real life, you're probably going to get slapped. Search something on YouTube, uh, best biceps exercises or how to do squats or something, and see how many of these videos that appear actually fall into one of these types of clickbait. A lot of them are going to fall into two or three or four or maybe even more of these categories. And that is the reality that we live in. There's only a limited amount of attention, and if you don't use any kind of clickbait at all, well, you're going to be left behind. And I do use some of these in my channel, on my videos, and I will continue to use them in the future. Just because if you don't, you're screwed. So that is all for this video. Happy Christmas. I mean, Merry Christmas. What am I saying? Happy New Year. And uh, I will see you in the next video. One final message is try to be aware of any holiday fitness scams. It's that time of year where people are trying to uh, get back on the fitness horse. And there are certainly no shortage of fitness pieces of sh or influencers rather uh, trying to take advantage of that newfound passion. All right. So that is all for this video. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, notifications, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in that next video. Peace. On the fifth day of clickbait, my true bro gave to me five golden tidbits. <laughs>